Hi, I'm Daniel Paluzic. I'm with the VMware Cloud Provider Solutions Engineering team. I'm here today to talk about our new release of vCloud Availability 3.5. And I'm going to go through some of the technical what's new capabilities with this great release. So to start off, let's talk about the on-premises environment. As you may be aware, uh, when we deploy vCloud Availability in the on-prem environment, it also deploys a plugin that resides within the vSphere environment. This has been enhanced, but also one of the distinct additions is now we have the ability to see bandwidth capabilities. And this is great because now this can not only be exported out to a TSV, but we can see what is our end consumption of that network utilization for any type of protection between a on-premises location to a cloud, between clouds, because the bandwidth metering also resides in the plugin inside of VCD, but also provides that end-to-end -end visibility of what's going on with my overall environment. The next thing I'm going to talk to you about is on the provider side. So previously, we had to collect usage reports on a per VCAV instance. So if I had four different vCloud availability instances throughout my provider framework, I would have to go to every single vCAV instance and now pull that manual report. Well, we released a patch for usage meter 3.6.1 that allows for automatic metering of any vCloud availability usage within the overall environment. And usage meter can pull multiple vCAV instances along with vCD and build that into the monthly usage units report and show that as a billable object within the overall environment. So making a lot of that operational overhead a lot easier in one single place to actually pull that consumption data on a monthly basis. The next thing I want to kind of talk about is what I consider the geo or regional data center support. So you can see that I have a cloud site for Phoenix with VCD, and we'll go ahead and add vCloud availability here. But we also have my Atlanta location where we're recording this Lightboard video. Um, but my Atlanta location is a little different than Phoenix. You can see that I have three different physical data centers associated to this single Atlanta VCD instance. And these are distributed throughout the state of Georgia. We have Macon, Buckhead, and Savannah. Previously, vCloud availability could only be deployed to a single instance or data center within um, VCD. We changed this logic within 3.5 to allow for this type of use case where I may have regional data centers all associated to a single VCD instance. Now, what this allows us to do now is optimal traffic routing. And this is very important because if I had that 3.0 instance deployed to Macon, but I had Acme that wanted to replicate to Savannah, I would have to traverse, hit Macon first, and then send that traffic over to Savannah. Now with 3.5, we still send the control traffic over to the VCD instance because that's where all of our roles-based access control resides and what are the policies established for my tenant, Acme. But then all replication traffic is then sent to Savannah, where we have a respective vCloud availability stack deployed for Savannah. And all of this, if we bring this into VCD constructs, this is a provider VDC, uh, really, at the end of the day. So what we're doing now is bringing the vCAV stack down to the provider virtual data center level, allowing for this flexible consumption and optimal traffic routing of our protected workloads. The next thing I kind of want to talk about is uh, the flexible networking. Previously, we had uh, the tunnel resided on a really a destination NAT, a translation on a wide area network connection. And while this worked for many different providers, you know, accepting a lot of different types of traffic patterns, we have companies that wanted to replicate over a maybe a direct connect connection, or we may have VPN. Um, a specific MPLS circuit that may come in rather than the, uh, my wide area network connection. So with 3.5, we allow the ability to accept and ingress in these type of different traffic solutions inside of a vCloud availability stack. And what happens here is the tunnel has changed its logic to say, if I get this request over our tunnel port, I can still terminate and authenticate it and associate within that overall environment. So again, the end benefit as a provider is now I can use all different types of traffic, not just WAN or my wide area network, to consume between an on-prem to a VCD environment 
or between VCD environments and allowing that flexibility in the overall environment. So the next thing I kind of want to talk about is the ability to also from an on-prem environment to group virtual machines into a vApp, but also set a boot order or delay. So this is what I consider kind of that foundational intelligent grouping or logic that we want to associate. So if I have VM1, VM2, VM3, I can say this is priority one, this is priority two, and this is priority three. And we can group this into a single construct that would then reside inside of my Phoenix environment along with what that boot order is. I boot number one up first, I have a 20 second delay for number two, and so forth within the environment. And this also exists over for cloud to cloud protection. So not only can we do vApp constructs within a cloud to cloud use case, we can also look at network properties of a vApp. So within the VCD construct, we have things like a vApp network or a vApp uh, edge or natting or anything like that. Those can be protected within vCloud availability and copied from, to, from a source to a destination inside of the C2C or cloud to cloud context within the overall environment. Now, if we kind of pivot over to what are some of those operational enhancements within the environment, we can now as the uh, provider UI, we have a Swagger UI identified within the overall environment to allow for that extensibility framework and see what's available from a API, public API perspective with vCloud availability and pulling some of those metrics and protected workloads through an extensible API. And if we look at some of the other uh, aspects it, inside of vCloud availability, as you may be well aware, we have the ability to um, have multiple replicator engines. So in a provider design, I may have multiple replicators. And now we have the ability to balance out protected workloads between replicator engines. This is all done through the provider UI and allow us, allows us to kind of use that kind of consumption to say, do we have too many protected workloads over onto this replicator? Let's move them over here. And this is a seamless migration process process within the overall environment. Moreover, when we look at data stores within a cloud provider environment, or what I would say storage policies that are backed by data stores, we may have protected workloads that reside in data store one or in this storage policy, and we may have to have any type of maintenance operation on this data store. Well, now we have the ability to put a data store in maintenance mode or evict it, if you will, and migrate these protected workloads over to the second data store within the storage policy within the overall environment. So learn more by going to cloudsolutions.vmware.com. Uh, we're really excited about this 3.5 release. And uh, thank you again for watching our Lightboard.